Welcome to Diane's Journal. This is where we record all of the amazing things God has taught us about Himself, because God's Word is good, and we can read it, love it, and understand it. Have you ever heard the song, Oh, be careful little eyes, what you see? Well, today we're going to talk about something that is actually one of my passions, but doesn't get talked about very often in Christian circles, or really any other circle. Media Literacy. Bible never talks about movies. Movies weren't invented 2,000 years ago. But the Bible does talk about protecting your mind. And so let's take a minute and let's just read some verses. Um, I'm going to be only reading a few verses, kind of pick and choose. Keeping this in mind, I'm going to list all of them in the show notes at dianesjournal.com slash pod2. Because these are all great verses that you really need to go up and look at yourself in context. Philippians chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, and if there is any moral excellence in anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And every proud thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive and to obey Christ. Proverbs fifteen thirty one through 32. Anyone who listens to life-giving rebuke will be at home among the wise. Anyone who ignores discipline despises himself, but whoever listens to correction acquires good sense. Now again, you should really go and look at the context of all of these verses and just really look at the Bible for yourself because where I'm going with this is I want you to remember not everything is worthy of you watching it or reading it. So what is media literacy? Well, to answer this question, let me give you a little bit of my background as it relates to media. Um, I'm a media professional. I mean, I am a generalist, which means I do a little bit of everything, mostly as it relates to video, like live video production, post-production. I do a lot of things that are designed to reach people. That includes things like video and photography and graphics and just a lot of different things that are media. So I've studied this. I've been a part of this for a long time. And one of the things that I find that Christians really need to be the leaders on, but aren't, is media literacy. So media literacy is knowing what the media you're consuming, whether it's through print media, like reading a book or watching a commercial or watching a movie or listening to music or podcasts, like who made it and why did they make it? Now, this is all about intentions and there's a lot that you just can't know for sure, but there is a lot that you can filter out and realize, should I really be watching this? And there's a lot of reasons why some really great movies maybe you shouldn't watch and I'm not saying like this is a hard and fast rule I mean you personally get really anxious for certain storylines maybe you've seen certain things portrayed in films that bring up some bad memories or maybe it's just nothing you can quite put your finger on but you just don't feel good afterwards well at any rate that's what media literacy is is knowing what something is and what's in it. Think about what you're consuming it and why are you consuming it. And like I said, I'm mostly going to talk about movies because that's the easiest, but this can include things like books. So are you consuming a lot of cheesy romance novels because they're fun, they're fluffy, and they're a great time waster? You know that. Or is Are they starting to seep in and give you really unrealistic expectations in romance? And Christian romance novels are just as bad at this as secular ones. 
So I talk about media literacy to some of my family members often. Um, I'm kind of the person to go to among my friends and family about, should, is this a good movie? Should I spend my money on watching it or not? So part of that is because I know what's, I can look at a trailer and be like, oh yeah, they, they, they rotoscoped that or, you know, they, they, this is the type of special effect that is, this is how they did something. Or this can be something like, hey, this looks like a good movie, but it does not look like a good movie for you. So an example of this is my mom. She was raised in a different background than I was. And so there's a certain movie series that I really like to watch. My sister likes to watch it too. But when she watches it, she just doesn't feel good. Like, it's like her whole day is just ruined and she gets a little short-tempered, a little bitey, a little spiky, a little off without really knowing why. So the movie, it's a children's show, but because it's an allegory for something else, it's not particularly good for her. It just doesn't work for her. It has great music. It's well known. If I said its name, you'd probably say, oh, I've seen that. It's not a bad movie, but it's a bad movie for her. So part of media literacy I learned when I was in school studying media, and this came up in a journalism class. And the journalism class, they defined it as basically knowing where are the source is. What's the source? Like, so not only who wrote it, but who did they talk to to get this in journalism? So I'm not a journalist. I had to take the class because it was a requirement. But I had been learning media literacy all my life. For an example, I am the worst person on the planet, possibly, to watch a movie with. Because I was raised without a willing suspension of disbelief. So you may have heard this term. Basically, it's the part of your brain that you know it's just a movie. But say if you're watching a superhero movie and you're like, wait a minute. That guy, that's just a guy. That guy can't fly. He can't really pick up a bus. That's a movie. But you go along with it because it's a good story, right? I was raised a little bit without that. <clears throat> so the movie The Wizard of Oz is an example. If you've never seen it, it's an old movie. Uh, spoilers. There's two witches in the movie. One of them dies at the very beginning. You never even see her face. You just see her feet and a building on top of her. And so she's, that's the person with the ruby slippers at the very beginning of the movie. And then the ruby slippers disappear and they, sh and like the, the stocking things shrivel up and they kind of sink back into the building. Came out in 1939, I believe. And it's just a special effect. But if you're a little kid, or you're just really involved in the story, that can get really scary. And that's like in the first 20 minutes of the movie. So, as a, as a kid, one of my parents was really uh, scared by that part when it was on TV. And when they grew up, they said, you know, my kids have so much to be afraid of in the world as it is. Let's not let movies be on that list. So, whenever I was a kid... We'd be watching a show, and one of my parents would yell, ACTING! Whenever there's a really dramatic thing that's going on. So whenever you would try to wind yourself up and be part of the story, which is what they're made to do, I would never get to be that full, like, oh, I'm in this, you know, let's make sure the good guys win. No, it's just a movie. It has always been just a movie. So I have always been very irreverent when it comes to watching movies with people. So I do this to my friends, like when they come over and we're just going to watch, you know, a superhero movie or a princess movie, depending on the day. And then I just crack a joke at it because it's just a movie. Sometimes you need to realize it's just a movie or it's just a book or it's just an article or it's just a whatever you're listening to. So as Christians... Knowing this kind of thing, it's not a every person must only ever watch this type of show or must only ever listen to this type of music or must only ever be a part of this type of media. 
As a matter of fact, it's a wisdom issue. For those of you who are like, okay, Diane, I get it. Media literacy is important, but how do how do I get that? I do, I'm not a film person. I didn't go to school for this that you apparently did. So I'm going to give you some practical tips for developing media literacy. Number one, limit your time. All of us should be able to have an app on your phone. You can set your own time limits for certain apps or certain genres of apps. I've been keeping track of my screen time in a bullet journal for this month, and it's a little shocking to me because it's like, I have this much free time. I had no idea. Even though there are times that, yes, you should be allowed to indulge in your favorite show. It's good to rest. It's good to give yourself a break. But... It's not always the best thing for you to spend all of your time there. Ask yourself the five W's and an H, who, what, when, where, why, how. Sometimes you really got to do your research, figure out who made this movie, who wrote this book, who made this song, why did they do it, when did they do it, because frankly, sometimes you can find really great facts and really great, you know, interesting points but it was written so long ago that those are obsolete, that they're different now. Would you let people around you watch or listen or read whatever you're doing with you? Because if you're having a show or a book that you're reading, but you have to read it by yourself, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want anybody to know you were reading it. Good chance you probably should not be reading it. And this, again, goes to all media not just movies, but magazines and, you know, blogs that you may follow or any social media platform. Look at their reviews. Now, I'm not always right. I fully know that and I fully acknowledge that. So back when new movies were coming out before the whole 2020 thing, I used to watch two main film reviewers. And the reason why I watched two is because one, I typically agreed with the other I typically disagreed with. So another great thing is to ask your friends who know not only you, but your behavior and your reaction to certain things, if they've seen it and they think it's okay. I'm this person for a lot of people, um, so it can be hard to find this person, especially if you are that person. But like I told you at the beginning, like I have someone that I'm very close to that I'm like, this is a children's show, it's, a rare, it's classic, it's clean, every everything about it in conventional Christian circles says you should be able to watch it, but it's not right for you. That doesn't make the movie bad, and it doesn't make you bad. It just means you're not a fit. This is a good thing to remember in terms of culture as a whole. Because you didn't like, or you're not interested, or even you are interested, but you know you really shouldn't, in something that's very popular, that doesn't make whatever it is bad necessarily. It just means you're not a fit, and it's okay to not like it or to not want to watch it for whatever reason. Because you have to remember that most media comes in the form of advertising, entertainment, or information, right? And so it's okay to be like, you know, this is strictly an entertaining thing, this movie, this show, this book. It's supposed to just be fun or interesting or entertaining and then not want to watch it. So it's not uncommon in Christian circles to hear something called a social media fast. Now, I do want to be careful about using the word fast because in the Bible, it only ever refers to food and not anything else. It does talk about abstaining from other pleasures such as sex when you're married. Some of you may need to do a hard reset from anything digital for a few days just so you can start to do other things like try reading books. Try, you know, just you, just, you never know how well something is going to affect you until you really have to live without it. It's okay to be entertained as a Christian. You can still have your thoughts, and you can still have your personality, and you can still have your interests, but just remember that in the end of the day, you are made to glorify God, and you will like it. Because when God gets glory, everything else falls into place. Thank you.
you for listening to Diane's Journal. If you were impacted by today's episode, please leave a review on your podcasting app. To connect with me, you can follow me on Instagram at dianes.journal. Uh, or for more resources, go to dianesjournal.com. And always remember that God's Word is good so you can read it, love it, and understand it. Talk to you soon.